Hey everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of the most requested videos I've had to date. So we're going to be talking about frequently asked questions for foiling. So I was originally going to do one large video of FAQs about foiling and then also tips and tricks for troubleshooting when you're having issues with foiling, but I feel like these two videos are both kind of lengthy, so I'm gonna separate them and do them in two separate videos. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about frequently asked questions for foiling, and then in a separate video that I will be posting shortly is going to be troubleshooting techniques. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that and make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss when I post those videos. Before we get into that, I just wanna mention a couple of things. In my last video, I mentioned that I had something very exciting launching on October 1st. And if you don't know already, I actually launched my website. So you can go to www.thefoiledplan.com and you will find my website where I share video tutorials, blog posts, as well as uh, handmade items for purchase and um, also SVGs and cut files. So any of the designs that you see me working with that I've created myself, I am uploading there. And right now I do have a little promotion on for the launch of my website. So you can use the code LAUNCH10 for 10% off all digital downloads. And if you're interested in foiled logo stickers, I also have those posted on my website and you can get 25% off those if you use the code LAUNCH25. So just wanted to throw that out there. I'm very excited about the launch of my new website. It was a lot of work and I did it all myself. And I'm just, I'm really excited to have one place where you can find everything you need for crafting. So if you guys check it out, let me know in the comments below what you think. I appreciate your opinion, but um, please be kind because I'm a sensitive little thing. So, <sighs> okay. Anyways, let's get started with some frequently asked questions about foiling. The number one question I get is how does foiling work? And I will answer this question until my last day on earth. I love foiling and I want people to get into it. So if you are ever curious about it, I will tell you. So you take a toner printed or laser printed image. It has to be on a laser printer. And you take a sheet of reactive foil you lay it on top of your printed image. So you need heat and pressure for this process to work. So you feed it through your machine and once it comes out the other side, you can use a laminator, um, a mink machine, anything of the sort. Once it comes out the other side, you peel the foil off and the foil only sticks to where the toner design was. So the way that it actually works like scientifically, the heat causes the toner to heat back up and then it fuses with the foil. So the foil only sticks to where the toner is. So that's kind of how it works. And another question that I get quite frequently is, does it have to be a laser printer? Can I just use my inkjet printer? And the answer is no, you cannot use your inkjet printer. It has to, has to, has to be a laser printer. And not only does it have to be a laser printer, but it needs to be a monochromatic laser printer. A lot of people have color laser printers thinking, oh, then I don't need an inkjet printer at all because this laser printer can do everything that I need, when in reality it has to be monochromatic for you to get the best results. The thing is, even if you print a design in black toner, when it is a color laser printer, you're still going to have spotty coverage because there's going to be little flecks of color mixed in with that black, even though you can't see it when you print the image. So yes, monochromatic laser printer is what you need no inkjet, no color laser printer, monochromatic laser printer. Keep that in your head. Okay, so the next question that I get frequently is what paper is the best to use? And 
there's lots of different options out there. The things that you want to be mindful of is the weight of the paper as well as the smoothness of the paper. So for myself, I use typically two types of paper. So I have this Recollections brand paper. I have a whole tote of like all different colors. So this is typically what I use. This is a 65 pound paper. So it's a cardstock. It's not super, super thick, but thick enough that it's not going to be really flimsy because you want a nicer quality cardstock paper rather than just like copy paper if like especially if you are selling your prints. So this is the paper that I use. It's nice and smooth. Some people I've heard don't have the best results with this, but this is what I've been using since day one and it's worked great for me. So if you are having issues, I'm going to suggest that it's maybe not the paper causing the issue. If you're using this one, it's probably something else. So I use that one. And then I also use a 110 pound paper and I just use white and it's the Staples brand. And, um, that's the reason I use that one rather than the white version of this recollections brand is because when I'm making a white print. I want my white to be very, very bright, almost like copy paper, but in a cardstock version. And I just find the white paper in this type of package, it has a more warm hue to it. And that's just not what I want for my prints. But if you like that more warm tone to your paper, then go ahead and use that. But yeah, so that's 110 pound paper. This is 65 pound paper. Those are the papers that I choose to use. Another question that I get quite frequently is how do I get the effect of having some things foiled and some things not? So this technique, when I do it, I use two separate printers. So you can kind of see in the corner of my screen here, two little black things over here. So this one over here is my laser printer. And then this one over here is my inkjet printer. So what I do is I will print anything that I want foiled on my laser printer and anything that I want not foiled or if I want it in color, I will print it on my inkjet printer. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get the design where it needs to be because each printer out there has different alignments. So even though I print part of the design on this, if I go to print the rest of the design on this, it's probably gonna be like off center or just like a little bit crooked just because the alignment is different. So it takes a little bit of playing around, but to answer that frequently asked question, when you want to have a design that is partially foiled, partially not, you need to use two separate printers. You can also use a inkjet printed image and then use a toner pen to put on the spots where you want them foiled and then do the same process for foiling. I'm not a huge fan of the toner pens because I find they can bleed really easily. And if you don't wait for it to be completely dry, it just doesn't have the nicest results. Also too, I don't find the lines that you create with them very crisp and clean, but to each their own. Some people really like them. So that is an option as well. So another frequently asked question that I get is, what do I need to get started? and there's a couple of things that you need. Now I did already create a video previously before I did my whole craft room makeover. So you'll see that my space used to look quite a bit different, but it was all about how to get started in foiling, especially when you're a beginner and possibly on a budget. So there's different options out there to get started. Now, like I mentioned before, you do need a toner printed image. So you're going to need either a laser printer or you're going to need to go elsewhere to have an image printed at like a print shop on a monochromatic laser printer. So the printer that I use is the HP LaserJet Pro MFP M127FW. Now I do have that linked in my Amazon shop. This is not the only laser printer that you can use. I've just had this one for years. It's the one that I bought to get started in foiling and I have loved it and I won't upgrade until this thing 
basically just stops working altogether. So that's just the printer that I use. I know it's fairly outdated, so there's other options out there. It's just what I use. I create my designs on my iPad in the app called Procreate, and then I print them on my printer or get your design printed elsewhere. You need a smooth paper and you can also use a transfer folder. I use the plastic ones from Heidi Swap. And I also have those linked in my Amazon shop, which I will put in the description box below. And you can either choose to use those or not. It just depends on what I'm working with. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. And then you also need a heat source. So I have the Mink machine. I have the largest model that you can get. You can also use just a basic laminator, but if you are using a laminator, it's best to choose one that has different heat setting capabilities. Basically, any laminator should be able to do the trick if you can get it to be hot enough. That's basically all you need. Your printer, your toner printed image on smooth paper, and some heat source like a laminator or a mink machine. That's what you need. Oh, you also need foil. <laughs> a duh. So you also need reactive foil. There's lots of different kinds out there. In my previous video, I mentioned using deco foil or Heidi Swap foil. I like both of them. They both do a great job. Deco foil seems to be more cost effective if you're just starting out because it's a smaller roll. It does have five individual, I think it's five individual sheets that are about this long. And the Heidi Swap rolls are a continuous roll, so they're not in separate sheets. And um, I only recently started buying foil in bulk, so I actually use a completely different kind. It's from a different supplier and I get it here in Canada. But I mean, if you're not purchasing in bulk, you don't really need to go with that option. Just buy a couple. I have a lot linked in my Amazon shop below. Okay, so let's recap. Toner printed image on smooth paper your heat source, your foil, and optional is a transfer folder. So that is what you need to get started in foiling. All right, so that is all I have for you guys today for frequently asked questions about foiling. If you have any more questions, please drop them in the comments section below and I will try and address them as soon as possible. If you have specific questions about how to get the best results when foiling or if you're having issues when you're foiling, like I mentioned in the beginning, I will be posting a video shortly about troubleshooting techniques with foiling. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> if you're interested in any of the products that I mentioned today, I will as always link them in my description box below. Almost everything that I use is available in my Amazon shop. And then also if you're interested in checking out my website, I will have it linked below as well. And um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, bye. The camera is too far away for me to touch it. So pretend, just pretend. Okay, bye.